people, Marissa here, and as you know, I'm a huge pop culture nerd. Just because Batman is petite doesn't mean you shouldn't be carrying shirts. I mean, maybe he wants to wear a Spider-Man shirt. Now, that would be Marvel, and he is not very pro-Marvel, but I I'm trying to get him to come around. So that's why I'm bringing you this video here today, which required a lot of intense research, but I think, as you'll see, it was pretty worth it. Let's discuss movie credits. Do you ever actually sit through them in any movie that isn't a Marvel movie? Because let's face it, we all sit through the Marvel movie credits so that we could see the extra scene. But even in those Marvel movies, do you actually read the credits? I don't think anybody does read the credits. And if they did, like if I went to movies with somebody and they're like, no, no, sit down, I have to watch and read the credits. I think I'd be a little bit concerned. I always thought that movie credits are just there for like the friends and family of the cast and crew so that they could be like, hey look ma, I did a movie thing. But actually, maybe we should read the credits a little bit more because sometimes there are some pretty cool Easter eggs hidden right there in the credits. And that is what brought me on my journey to make this video where I researched movie credits and found that there are a lot of really cool Easter eggs hidden at the end of movies, right there in the credits. And they're really bizarre, so let's count them down. So the first bizarre movie credits that I found were from 1981's An American Werewolf in London. Oh, werewolves in London. Is that where that song came from? It just clicked right now. <laughs> oh, werewolves in London. They actually gave a shout out to Princess Diana and Prince Charles on their wedding because the movie came out the same year that they were married, so of course you have to give them a shout out. I mean, that would be like if Beyonce or Kim K, when they got married, I mean, obviously I'm sure the British people put a big congratulations in their movies that year, right? Because basically, Kim K and Beyonce are the closest that we're going to get to a princess die royalty time. Am I right? All right, this next one is kind of gross. Although, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like bugs. I call this one William. <laughs> and this is little Peggy Sue. <laughs> There's a credit for Roach Wrangler in Creepshow. Now, what this actually means is that there were members of the crew whose actual job it was to wrangle the roaches. One guy's name was David A. Brody, and the other guy was Raymond Menendez. Check out Raymond Menendez's IMDb, because you'll see he also worked on Silence of the Lambs, where I'm wondering if he did that moth thing on the movie poster, and a fun Easter egg there, notice the skull within the moth and the multiple layers. My point is, someone actually had to get those roaches to behave in the way that they wanted. And I have a quote here from one of the most famous roach wranglers because those two weren't the only roach wranglers in the game. In fact, a man by the name of Stephen Kutcher might even be the biggest roach wrangler of all time. And he said, any fool could put a bucket of cockroaches on the table, but it takes somebody knowledgeable to know how to make them act for a camera. Okay. <laughs> or at least that's how I'd imagine he sounds. So the next time you're complaining about your boring desk job, be glad that you're not playing with bugs for a living. So the next one is actually the Old Testament. It was a silent film in 1922, and they had different credits, three different sets of credits for three different audiences. They had one for Protestants, one for Roman Catholics, and one for Jewish people watching the film. And they say that our culture is too PC today. All right, now this one just makes me go, how? In 1987's The Bit Part, they misspelled their big star's name, okay? And I'm not talking about Nicole Kidman, I'm talking about Chris Haywood. It's Haywood with an A. But for some reason, in the credits, they spelled his name Haywood with an E, like Haywood. Yikes. But, on a positive note, they did spell his name correctly in the movie poster, so I guess that counts for something. My next one is Night Patrol. It's just a regular old American comedy from the 80s. It came out in 1984. Nothing too extraordinary about it, it's just a comedy. But where this movie goes from ordinary 80s comedy to something else was in their movie credits. See, their movie credits were for some reason 
in French. Now, I call that some good trolling because they probably were like, well, nobody's gonna read these things anyways. And to the person who came up with that, I say, a votre centre. I have no idea if I said that right. Hopefully Google Translate didn't let me down. All right, so this next one is from Help, the 1965 Beatles film. I need somebody help, not just anybody help. Now, the Beatles were awesome. I'm not just talking about their wonderful music or their great sense of humor. I mean, when Lennon said, uh, for those of you in the cheap seats, clap your hands, and for everybody else, ride all the jewelry. I mean, I can laugh about that every single day for the rest of my life, and it won't get old. And it's also not just because of Lennon's fantastic sunglasses, which I know we all have a pair of them. Imagine all the people. No, for our purposes, the Beatles are awesome because of their end movie credits to help. You see, they dedicated their film to Elias Howe. All right, so if you don't know who Elias Howe is, he's the guy who invented the sewing machine in 1846. So if you're the biggest band in the world, who are you going to dedicate your movie to? Obviously, the creator of the sewing machine. So call this absurd British humor or call it the fact that these guys really were into their passion and it wouldn't have been possible without Howe's invention. And I say have a home run there. All right, now this one is one of the most recent credits that I could find. It's from 2009's A Serious Man, which is of course a Coen Brothers film. And leave it to the Coen Brothers to do something weird. They, in their credits, put that no Jews were harmed in the making of their film. To which I say, why stop there? Why not say, why not say other groups were not harmed? What about Irish people and Asians and Quakers? You want an extra little tidbit. Ethan Cohen went to Princeton University. He actually went to his professor and said that he couldn't turn in his work on time because he lost his arm in a hunting accident while clearly having two arms. Call that absurd Cohen comedy. There are a lot of brothers making comedies between the Coen brothers, the Farley brothers, the Wayans brothers. I mean, the 90s and early 2000s were kind of dominated by brothers and their comedy endeavors. And I am not complaining about that because their movies are among my favorite. I mean, come on, Dumb and Dumber. Well, forget Dumb and Dumber too, but Dumb and Dumber, best movie ever. All right, now this one is pretty brilliant. This is Airplane 2. Now, Airplane 1, Oh my gosh, the I have a drinking problem joke made me laugh so hard the first time I heard it when I was 10 and I've never gotten over that. Like, I'm still laughing in my head over that joke, even to this day, 13 years later. <laughs> Don't even, I think I saw the sequel, but I barely remember it. But a joke that I know I missed was in the credits where Adolf Hitler was credited as the worst boy. Now this makes sense, Adolf Hitler, bad dude. But now, here's why it's so brilliant. In a movie, in movie speak, in movie expert speak, the assistant to the gaffer and the key grip in a film are called best boys. So you get the play on words, best boys, worst boy. All right, now I said Marvel and their end credit scenes right from the beginning, but here we have one right in the credits. In Guardians of the Galaxy, a movie that most of you are going to hate me for saying I think was terribly overrated, with the exception of their soundtrack. Ooh, got chaka, ooh, got chaka, ah, 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 bum, bum, I'm hooked on the feeling. I swear, I'm actually a really good singer. They actually had in their credits that no raccoons or tree creatures were harmed during the making of their film. It's good to see that the real life group wasn't harmed because I thought he was a little too committed to his craft. And finally, we have Hot Shots from 1991. Uh, now, not to be outdone by Airplane because it's by Zuckerberg again, the same people that brought you Airplane bring you Hot Shots starring Charlie Sheen in all his glory. I never actually saw the trailer, so I wasn't even alive then, but if I had to guess, I would say that is exactly what the trailer said. So in Hot Shots credits, it actually says at the end of them, if you had left the theater, you'd be home by now. Talk about pushy credits. And I thought Ferris Bueller at the end of his credits saying, it's over, go home, was bad. Although Deadpool, did you see at the end of Deadpool? So funny, he takes on the Ferris Bueller scene in the towel and everything and says the same lines. And that's another reason why Deadpool was the greatest movie of 2016 and deserved an Oscar nom, but I'm not complaining. 
So there you have it, nine bizarre end movie credits. So next time you watch a movie, check out the credits and see, maybe you'll find some kind of Easter egg. And when you do, let me know in the comments what some of your favorite Easter eggs are and if you know of any other movies that have bizarre ending credits. Thumbs up, subscribe, I'll see you next time.